welcome to Collaboratory, the show where Mike Morris improvises an animatic with a little help from our audience, and uh, the rest of us learn about the craft of storyboarding along the way. Mike, how are you today? I'm good. It's been a month, and uh, I'm ready to to get back going on this board. Um, and uh, welcome back, sir. It's good to be back. And we are about a month away from the Auto International Animation Festival and conference, and I'm looking forward to attending. If you know anyone who's going to be heading up that way, please tell them to come by and say hello. So today we'll be looking for prompts to help us resolve last episode's setup. And to give you an idea of the hijinks we get up to, last time on Collaboratory, we featured a depressed fish and an octopus who wanted to be where the people are, uh, who were unprepared ingredients in a cooking competition while the fish tries to explain their situation to the oblivious octopus. So the question we're going to try to answer today is how do they get out of this? Or do they? Or do they? Uh, Mike, do you want to play the episode? Huh? Uh, would you like to play the episode for our audience? Would you like me to recap, or? Yeah, uh, well, let, let's let's take a look at the uh, at what happened last week, or last month, I should say. Last month, yes. <laughs> See, it feels so, like a week ago. Yeah, time just flies anymore. <laughs> and in the meantime, send in those suggestions for possible resolutions. Once we yeah. uh, once we see it, or if you remember it, or if you've seen the resolution already. Let's get that going. Uh, so, Mike, do you want to give us a recap of the uh, of last uh, of what we have so far? Sure. So, what we have here is a fish who is just sighing and coming out of a of a container dish. Next to him is an octopus that just is more bubbly and vivacious than he should be. Uh, seeing how wonderful it is to be on the land and being in the sun and isn't this just the best thing ever and the fish turns around and says you don't even know what's going on here do you no what is it this place is just so marvelous i'm paraphrasing but you can watch the watch the end of it at the last episode if you'd like he's like you don't even know where you are do you no where am i you are about to die <laughs> And we we zoom out to see uh, a Master Chef Kitchen style uh, setup for a cooking competition. So I think right now we need to see what's happening uh, in this kitchen. You know, like gleaming knives, ingredients being chopped up, really serious people all at their stations. Um, and uh, Mike, in your experience, do you have any guidelines? for today's prompts or just advice for re resolving conflicts and storytelling? Um, you know, I think there's a lot of different ways to resolve conflicts and storytelling. And often with, with every story, there's sort of a point to the story, you know, like uh, we see allegorical stories, we see fables, we see a lot of different types of storytelling, each with sort of a message. With this, it's a little bit more open-ended and we're going for something that's funny um that's really what we're after is just something that's funny something that's a pleasing resolution um and there's a, a couple different ways it could go should they escape somehow should uh one of them escape and the other one's like no i'm staying here and then you know uh or should they both just be like well that's it i've lived my life done now but in the meantime, I thought we could talk a little bit about uh, guides for when we're storyboarding. Because right now we have something that lends itself really well to perspective guides. And so I'm going to bust out in this here uh, guide panel a uh, three-point perspective bird's eye view. Okay, and when I switch back to my uh, pen here, now I have this... Um, perspective uh grid here you can see that it follows my pencil so or it follows my my stylus here let me just get on a, a brush that's not 
the same color as the background and we'll show you. So I have yeah. this brush and you can see that it, it makes lines in accordance with uh, these points, right? And this obviously is going to be way too close of a perspective to deal with what we've kind of got going here. So we need to move this guy way, way up and start moving some of these points around. I'm going to hold shift so my, my horizon line stays similar and now with these these sorts of lines here i can start to figure out where i need to put my points because it when i move this it kind of shows me where i'm going and so i need to get up a little bit more and just sort of test out so that's too much bring it back down a little bit That's pretty good, but not quite. So we're going to move it out just a little bit more. Oh, that's going to the wrong point. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Now we need something that's going to match up on this, um, this plane here. So I'm going to move this guy way out. I find that a lot of times in perspective, there's usually one point that's like really, really far out and the other one that's, that's sort of close. Um, with three-point perspective, it can get a little bit different. So, you know, and honestly, in in um, perspective is just a, a study in and all of it, all of itself. I mean, there's a lot, a lot to do with uh, perspective, and in boarding, it, it it's a it's a thing that you should know well. And the guides yeah. sort of help so it, but that does not replace your knowledge of perspective. So we've talked about perspective before, and, and you've said that like uh, a one point perspective is, is very flat and flat can be funny. Uh, two point perspective is a bit more dynamic. Uh, you can sort of see um, a bit more depth of, of objects in the background. Uh, what does uh, a third point overhead perspective get you? Um, it gets you well, it depends on what you're using it for. A lot of the time, it's just camera placement is what it gets you. Um, and in this, an overhead shot is going to give us information. This is going to give us the scale of what we're looking at here. So we have right here this really <coughs> – excuse me. Um, I'm going to turn off the guide really quick so I can highlight this little fishbowl and this uh, bucket where the – the ingredients, AKA our characters are. So this is gonna give us a little bit of scale of what these guys are actually into. And um, we're just gonna draw in roughly these, um, just up my, my pen here so you can see it better. We're gonna, show that this is a much more dangerous situation than this uh, octopus really realizes. And, you know, there's measuring you can do with, with some of this stuff to make it a little bit more consistent. Um, and again, that comes back to your knowledge of perspective just on your own. There's a lot of really great books about it. I'm sure that there are, you know, YouTube experts and things like that that you can also turn to for guidance in learning for perspective, whether it be one, two, three, or multiple point perspectives. There's a lot yeah. of different and avenues. The perspective guide is also just a tool, right? Like it's basically a, a really fancy ruler. Um, it's, it doesn't it's a do really the drawing great for tool. you. It's a really great tool and it makes a perspective a little bit less effort intensive. But it doesn't it doesn't erase the idea that you need to learn perspective mm -hmm. as an artist. So what do we got coming down the pike? A pike? We're Is still waiting for uh, more prompts to uh, come in, but uh... 
Mike, in your experiences as we're waiting for uh, some ideas on how to resolve this or show uh, that this scene is incredibly dangerous, um, do you have any, uh, what does the work-life balance of a storyboard artist typically look like? Um, you know, ideally, it's a, a 40 hour work week and be done for the weekend, <laughs> in my opinion. Sounds great. But, um, <laughs> sometimes that's, that's not the case. Sometimes you have, uh, you know, last minute rewrites and things that need to be done. So there, there can be overtime. It's one of the most labor intensive of all the disciplines of animation. And uh, I'm not trying to scare you budding board artists, just trying to, you know, let you in on what you'd be getting into. However, it's also one of the places where you can really have an effect on how a story is told. You know, I, I feel like in design, you can only affect the story so much because, again, story is king, right? Story is always where um, the action happens, I would say. And everything else is keying off the story. If, if the, you know, if the show is good, that they're going to key off the story team. The design is going to be based on um, what the storytelling needs are. Everything is going to come right back down to that. So it's labor intensive, yes, but it's also a really rewarding thing. All right, we've got two question. suggestions that have come in so far. Yay! Uh, one is uh, to resolve the conflict, the octopus pulls the fish out of water, which could introduce uh, some more complications. Um, the other one is He's like, uh, See, we I'll could show. show... It's great. Ah, I can't breathe. <laughs> oh, uh, another thing is to to have like the the, the um, to show that they're in peril is to uh, have like a, a close up on some like fish and chips, you know, breaded tartar sauce. That's funny. I so, think maybe there so could be like is... three beats of like you know people chopping things, uh, standing around, uh, holding like you know gleaming knives, and then you know fish and chips. Yeah, I I think that's great. I mean, I mean, um, part of me actually wants to see a little bit of uh, the <clears throat> I told you so, maybe, <laughs> where, uh, you know, he takes the fish out of water, you know, plucks him out, and he's like, look, see, this is great being out here. And he's like, ah, I can't breathe. Uh, put me back in the water. And then he realizes that maybe this isn't for everybody. And then happily tries to help the fish escape and then unknowingly goes to his own doom. Those are some good suggestions. Yeah, no, I think there's there's a lot of comedy. I think so too. So let's uh let's just drop in some uh some sinks, some cutting boards. Uh and I we really want to just focus on this area right here where our our uh, characters are and those objects don't necessarily have to be in perspective per se because they're just objects placed so they would have their own perspective most likely so we're just going to rough these guys in right here put them like this in the bowl you ever find that you're struggling with uh, drawing ellipsoid ellipses or elliptical things in perspective. One of the tricks also is to just do this and draw a square around it and then just hit the four points like that. So I'm going that's to clever. erase this. This was uh, something that um, was highlighted by when, when I was at Cal Arts, um, we had a speaker that was um, w was an, a Disney animator that had been there for you know decades and had recently retired. And we started talking to him about like drawing in perspective and uh, drawing characters in perspective. And this is one of the things that he broke down for us was 
oh, well, you just draw a box around it and put it inside. Oh, it's almost like sculpting, right? Where you start with a big slab of marble and then sort of chisel it down. Yeah. Was it that old uh, that old story? Of, well, how did you get the statue? Well, I just, you know, this elephant is gorgeous. He's like, well, I just started chipping away everything that didn't look like an elephant. <laughs> So you just make that little guy fit into the box and you'll have some good perspective to base your fishbowl or whatever elliptical shape tires, you know, stuff that yeah. you want to put in there. You're drawing solids. Yeah. And you're, it's, it's much more solidified thing. Um, and you're, you're looking good. We're going to get rid of some of these scribbles. And uh, get rid of that. And we're just going to draw in um, something that we call in, in the biz salt shakers. I think we've mentioned that before Mike, on the show. What are salt shakers? So salt shakers are stand-ins for extras. So what you would do... <laughs> What you would do is draw in basically something that looks like uh, like this, like like a salt shaker, you know, like an old school 1950s diner salt shaker, right? So you would add these in as uh, extras into a sh into a show. Like if you want to just have placement of a character you know a character sometimes you can put arms on them if they're doing something specific you know i'm gonna put uh a cleaver right here that's in like uh like a block of wood or something like that but you can put salt shaker characters in there as placeholders for extras that you haven't identified yet um and they're just you know simple circle heads bodies on them like that you can, you know, on, on the Simpsons, oftentimes we would, you know, maybe do this to indicate that there's a, a mouth there, you know, or sometimes we'd do something like this to indicate where the eye line would be. But then it was just salt shaker body on top or on, on, on the bottom. Um, it depends on the show, depends on what the design of the show is like. And if uh, you have sort of like a shortcut uh, or like a not a shortcut, but a shorthand to yeah. make the characters look like the style of those characters and by all means adopt your your salt shaker head to to match that it's a good it's a good practice to to get into because oftentimes you're going to have scenes um with a lot of extras in them with a lot of different uh you know characters and and stuff and you just honestly you just don't have time to draw it all most often. So, so with, with that in mind story. of the like limited resources and time that you have as an artist, um, how do you stay inspired and avoid burnout? Um, I think it's, I think it's healthy to have some good hobbies. Um, something that inspires you. I mean, and, and we've talked about this on the show before that both of us are really into tabletop games. And I feel like that has become a lot of creative outlet for me where um, I'm not having to focus on a script or I'm not having to focus on anything in particular except the story that I'm telling at the moment. And I think that helps a lot with, uh, with, with burnout. I also find that switching up the type of art that you're doing um, in, a, in a big way uh, really is, is fun. Um, I, I find VR drawing to be particularly um, sort of mold breaking as far as the way that you draw, because it forces you to to try out different ways of drawing, because um, you're drawing in three D space and and it's uh, it's a whole big deal. But um, it's uh, it breaks you out of the mindset that you're in and you're trying something in a new in a new space. And I feel like that's really helpful to prevent any kind of uh, situation where you would feel burnt out. 
I guess we, we don't want to be in a situation where you're burning the candle at both ends and uh, in your time off, you're doing the exact same thing you're doing in, in your day job. Yeah, that, that might be a little uh, detrimental to what you're you know trying to do. If you're trying to stave off burnout, um, doing what you're doing all the time isn't going to help. You want to you want to explore something new, explore something different, something that you're not doing. Okay, so I, I think that we could try doing something with the th impending threat of dismemberment or something. You know, maybe we'll put in the foreground here on layer E. Um, actually, BG first, and then we'll drop a little uh, perspective plane here. Something a little bit lighter, just a really rough one. We're not we're not having to get up the guide for this. Um, and then, so this would be the end of the table here, maybe a little bit farther away. We'll just keep that going and erase out some of the other stuff that we don't necessarily need because we're still exploring what we need this space to be. But um, if we hold down shift, we can make straight lines. Makes it look nicer. And right here, we're going to put the edge of the um, cutting board. And right here, we're going to put the handle of the cleaver that's buried <laughs> in that. So we get the story sense that there is a definite threat looming over our, our people, or not our people, but these characters. And we're going to take this and we're going to put that on a foreground layer because that's where it belongs. We need to separate that element. Actually, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to retcon some of that because I don't want to erase my background if I'm going to put this on a separate layer. So uh, Vert in the chat uh, just said, I used to work as a background extra. I guess I'm a human salt shaker. Hey, right on, man. Good for you. It's a living. <laughs> it's a living. <laughs> it's a uh, living. The uh, the punchline to many a Warner Brothers cartoon. <laughs> it's a living. I think uh, was it Warner Brothers or Hanna Barbera? It was the Flintstones, right? Uh, yeah, the Flintstones did it a lot too. It was a very popular joke yeah. back then. <laughs> yeah, it's a living. And then the Simpsons came along with, what you going to do? It's All interesting right, so how got, uh, you have different stock there. jokes from different eras. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So then uh, we'll put uh, our, our friend the octopus right here, who is way much more in, uh, in La La Land than our fish friend. Wide-eyed, fascinated. Yeah, wide-eyed, um, absolutely. Let's uh, let's take down the size of that brush. Sometimes I feel if I draw with a pen that's too thick, I, I feel like I'm missing out on a little bit of the uh, delicacy of, of drawing, I guess. I tend to make more crude marks instead of more informed marks. Maybe that's just me. Sometimes you so need a finger paint, sometimes you don't. <laughs> yeah. All right, there we go. There's something I'm liking a whole lot more. And again, it, with an octopus, it was a little bit more difficult to figure out um, exactly how to make him emote in a way that um, felt like he was being happy. So those bottom eyelids are really helping us out a lot. Mm -hmm. And if any of you character designers out there ever feel like taking a crack at any of these characters that we produce on Collaboratory, uh, put, post it on Twitter or social media anywhere with a hashtag yeah, Collaboratory. Yeah, tag us at Toon Boom, we'll see it. Yeah, hashtag Toon Boom, hashtag Collaboratory, hashtag Swordboard Pro. 
any one of those. And uh, yeah, I'll see him. Yeah, he'll see him. And then maybe you'll see him on stream. That'd be fun. This is looking good. Are you not seeing huh? all the instruments of death here? <laughs> <laughs> this. And I think he should um, let's let's go ahead and we're going to duplicate that. You could have him make a little choppy motion with the fin. <laughs> I think I think one one thing we could do is just take his little head right here, not this part of the body, and just dip it down like this. Change the eyes slightly. And then gesture the other way. Put this one down. So he's going that, this, and then we'll cut to um, like, you know, a grill or, or something like that. Ooh, 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 deep fryer. <laughs> <laughs> a deep fry basket. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So let's let's go right here. We've got, uh, you know, somebody reaching in. It's got chef sleeves. And we're gonna have him. Actually, let's let's put that hand back a little bit so we get a bit, bit more motion out of that. Mm. That. On here, he's got. He's gonna grab that. And of course, remember we're doing this in in, in thumbnails just so we can get through more, um, more material. It comes in. We're gonna duplicate that, and then uh, do a little uh, trickaroo here. Make it look like he's turned it. a lot you can do with just sliding vectors around a lot of times so mm -hmm. i think you're lucky stars if you're working storyboard pro you're working in a vector program it's we had a question perfect. come in yeah we had a question come in uh, about like how uh detailed or simple storyboard uh needs to be and i think the answer is how much time do you got yeah how much time have you got and how much are is expected of you from your production if you're just doing it on your own, if you're if you're gonna uh, gonna be your own one stop shop and you are you know animating the thing yourself, then be as descriptive as you need to be. Then you can you know do more in animation if you want, uh, which you probably will because it's your film. If you're working for a production though, um, they're gonna have guidelines oftentimes of what they want, how detailed they want things to be. There's some productions that are like super detailed. They want everything to be like as detailed as possible. And then there's others that are like, no, we want you to keep it rough because we want to make sure that the animators feel like they have license to do this and that to make it look better. That was often the case in some shows that I've worked on where they're like, keep it rough because this is going to help overseas realize, oh, this isn't a finished product. Um, feel free to embellish it how you need to. And then there's other shows where like, no, you lock this down because this is exactly what we want. We don't want animation to deviate from our boards. And if they deviate from our boards, we're going to go over to wherever they are and spit in their hair, um, which they don't really do, but um, they would threaten that spitting in the air. Yeah, not recommended during the pandemic. Well, that was that was the threat, though. That was the threat was during the pandemic. Spit in their hair. Oh wow! <laughs> oh. Have a nice helping of COVID, you lazy artist. No, um, oh. just kidding. We don't we don't joke about that. We we support the well being of artists. <laughs> we do. We absolutely do. But we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of uh, effects here after he turns this. 
we're going to have, uh, you know, um, let's get some orange going on here so we can actually Ooh. make it feel like. Some fire is being come coming up through these grills. Um, and then one of the other things you can do is cut these off around wherever. I mean, you just want to seal off this particular uh, image so where there's no um, gaps. And then you can use the auto mat and uh, create mat on new layer. Yes. And then I uh, want the custom color to be something like this with an alpha that's going to come down. I don't see anywhere to set that. So we're just going to do this and go OK. And boom, yay, we've got that going on. And then we can take this color and just sort of like nerf it around a little bit and see what we can come up with. Oh, perfect. There we go. So click. Whoosh. <laughs> and then um, let's do just a quick pan uh, to another instrument of death. We're going to, before we do that, let's um, just make a little cut in the timeline here. And then we'll go to somewhere over here. And maybe we'll have, uh, what do we think of like a rotisserie maybe? Yeah, yeah. Could either have and a then rotisserie. Then we'll go to the fat fire. Uh, yeah, that, that sounds fun. I think I think it's 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 good in threes. I mean that's kind of like yeah the, yeah the thing right. Uh, or how else? I don't think an oven like an oven's too enclosed. Boiling pot. So I think rotisserie might be. Oh oh well, um. Boiling pots because too much if it's like boiling, the you have the steam come out right. Yeah, but that's too much like a deep fat fryer. That's true. Because we're gonna if that's gonna be boiling and then the basket's gonna come up and it's gonna have stuff in it. Or maybe uh, another chopping block with actual stuff on it that's chopped. Or yeah, uh, suggestions. We need sushi suggestions. Sushi mat people. with like rice and uh, nori, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, and rice isn't going to be like, oh, this is a life-threatening thing, though. It's true. It's true. Um, hmm. Yeah, if anyone has suggestions for other uh, sort forms of peril for uh, these these creatures, uh, please uh, send in suggestions. One other thing too is in this pan, we see we have some unfinished stuff here. So one thing that we can do to sort of mask that, and how much time we we we've got left? We're we're a little, we got to start booking it along. We can just close this off by, uh, you know, making it uh, look like the grill is finished, and we'll just put a another layer on top of that and hide this. Oh. Uh th Here's a suggestion we didn't think of. Um, uh, either a saute pan or a wok. Ooh, a wok. That might be kind of fun because you can yeah. see the stuff like coming up and down. Bouncing around. Yeah, I think that's great. <coughs> that. Uh... Speaking of COVID, that's why I have this lingering cough. So pardon me, folks. Yeah, uh, no, I, I had said that um, about uh, a month ago uh, that, oh, you know, I didn't get uh, sick once this entire pandemic. And uh, then the next day, uh, I felt a tickle in my throat. And uh, that's oh. when I, I got it. Oh, no. But uh, it bounced back quickly. You tempted fate, so, man. So uh, hoping, yeah, uh, hoping a quick recovery for you, too. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling much, much better. It's been a little while now. But, uh, you know, so this is, um, we're going to do a little bit of a zip pan. And zip pans can get pretty elaborate with what you're doing. But the biggest thing about a zip pan is you got to give it a little room on each side to breathe. Um, so the camera can slow down without it looking too weird. Right? So when we're looking at it in the camera, we're going from here and it's going zip over to our friend uh the walk 
Let's take off our fill. And um, we're that, gonna that, just that's have that. kind of that. like a smear frame almost. It is a smear frame. The smear yeah, frame simulating uh, motion blur. Yeah. So we're gonna put this walk right here. And uh, I, I like cooking with a walk. I think it's fun. Yeah. A lot of surface area. Yeah. Um, you know, everything gets fried. It's uh, it's good. I lived in Hong Kong for a time. And um, I, I knew a, a gentleman that uh, was awesome on a walk. <laughs> that mm. guy could cook <laughs> like nobody's business. And it was awesome to watch him because uh, he would just get all crazy with his stuff, and and it was it was really cool. Some of the some of the street chefs too, um, the people that are making street food, like oh yeah, you wonder how they're not missing more fingers. Okay, so we have this. Now we're gonna make a duplicate of that, but what we want to do since we're staying in this little bit for a while, we're gonna make a duplicate of that again. And we're going to delete these middle frames, right? So, and then we're going to delete this one. So we have the end frame and the end frame are the same, right? So we have a hold, basically. We come over here and we're holding. And then we're going to split this up a little bit. Actually, before we split it, let's put uh, some, some stuff in the bottom of this, some shrimp. Um, but basically, we're just putting some stuff in this wok that we can toss around. And uh, let's put a hand on one side because, you know, they shake it around with one and then with the other hand. It's uh, usually a long set of chopsticks or um, sometimes a, a, a large spoon. Um, I always thought that the chopsticks, the, the big, long cooking chopsticks are much more interesting to look at personally yeah because it uh it I, I guess it adds more cultural flair visually i also think too if, if this is like a cooking competition um that looks a little bit more uh like a sophisticated tool than, than a spoon does sure absolutely i would agree with that um you were trying uh you're trying to pick up m&ms with chopsticks that's a fun game. I'm pretty good with them, but uh, I, I can imagine that would be difficult. All right, now we're going to draw this out here, and we're going to split it up. And we're going to be able to use a couple of these frames. And we're going to, again, we're going to manipulate the vectors into doing what we want. And changing things to to have the same sort of vector setup oops i went back to the beginning but still um have that motion that we need to show that things are changing you know so that bowl looks like it's being jostled around a little bit and we can grab this And we can rotate it a little bit to oh, miss some vectors. Rotate it a little bit too, so it looks like it's being, you know, shuffled around a little bit. Now, if this was produced as like an animated uh, feature or something, uh, would you want this to be sort of like Studio Ghibli style food, where it just looks like really delicious and beautiful? Well, I mean, you want to have things look delicious however you do it but um again that comes back to show style if you're if you're in the middle of a you know like a spider verse you don't want ghibli stuff showing up right in the middle of it <laughs> you want that to look like the show that it's intended for i think you if, know, if any you have could get away with it i feel like spider verse design, could but, huh i feel like if any if any movie could get away with it spider verse probably could of the the sort of mismatch of art styles, possibly, possibly they do have some very talented uh, people working on those. Um, mm -hmm. I got to meet the art director, one of the art directors, once. This guy Patrick, super cool guy. 
Um, and he had, he had a lot of fun things to say about what happened on production and, and some of the challenges that they came up with and some of the solutions they found. And uh, it was really um, inspiring. I was part of a group that went over to Paris and did some talks uh, with an organization called IAMAG, uh, which has an amazing library of tutorials for any of you that are looking for like if, if you're getting bored with what you're doing, um, check out iMac. It's awesome. It's also just really cool to see uh, more feature films that are very stylized. Yes. Yeah, we were just talking about that before the show. Yeah, it's it's really encouraging to see. It is encouraging to see. Oh, I, I picked the pencil and I want that on my brush. And we want to take this thing, tip it. Okay. All right. So we've got trying in the walk. <laughs> we've got uh, a suggestion uh, for a mallet uh, whacking meat. Uh, oh. I think the, the correct term is a tenderizer. Yeah. Uh, like a spiky one. Yeah. Um... <laughs> it's a tenderizer. I think that's awesome. <laughs> Just tenderizer hitting a fish. I think that might have uh, it might have been used in The Little Mermaid. Hey, you know what? We'll, we get good ideas where we can get them. <laughs> um, and it worked so well, didn't it? it you, you know what? Uh, it, it, it's visceral. You, you see the thud. It looks uh, scary. Um... <laughs> There's the the squishy sounds involved as well, and we're gonna we're gonna lower oh, yeah, this you, so we don't get out of frame too much. I think it's important to give uh, foley artists fun work to do. It it is it really is. Um, let's have this be a little bit less perspectivey. There are a lot of uh, comments in the chat about really stylized uh, films uh, that are animated. Uh, Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, is one. Uh, Spider-Verse, of course. Mitchell's versus the Machines, also excellent. Oh, yeah. uh, one that I'd also add to that list, uh, I think The Bad Guys uh, looks fantastic. Oh, I love that movie. I love that mm. movie. It's so good. You know, well, actually, one, one, thing that, um, one thing that I did watch recently was the... <laughs> The, the Peanuts movie that Blue Sky put Oh, yeah. Out. That was a great example of, of great use of style. That was a while ago, too, right? Yeah, it, it came out a while back. But I feel like it still, it still holds up really well. And I'm going to turn this gray. Oops. Turn it gray. Then we're going to turn this black and then we're going to have uh fish on it and we're going to put an eyeball right here like that and then copy that and then we're going to drop the hammer on it. Um, whoosh. Boof. Boof, boof. We're going to have that eyeball. Bulge out. Bulge out <laughs> real far. As the rest of him is being pounded by a tenderizer. Mallet. Now you got that song stuck in my head from Little Mermaid, though, man. Le le poisson, le poisson. Le poisson. He, he, he. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> First you pound the fish flat with the mallet and you slice through the skin, give the belly a slice, you rub some sauce in, because that makes it taste nice. Dang it, man. <laughs> the, the the songs from the uh, the Howard Ashman uh, era of uh, Disney cartoons was uh, pretty good.
Although there are, there are some very, very catchy songs from Moana. Oh yeah. That's Encanto another, too. that's another really great film. I like that one a lot. Yeah. And it's, it's a good uh, sort of uh, gateway uh, movie to uh, Hamilton. Well, um, you know, we had, when I was working at television animation, we got a chance to, to watch the movie with Ron and John, um, mm. the directors of, of the movie. Well, and there, there were a couple of, of co-directors as well, Chris Williams and Don Hall, but um, just, you know, having a chance to meet and greet with them after the, after the film was um, a, a real delight. They're, they're... What's, so what was your favorite song from the movie? Um, there's, there's a lot. I mean, I like them all. Um, of course, uh, shiny cause I'm a, <laughs> yes, a fly to the Concords fan. Um, but uh, also you're, you're exactly. welcome with, 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 with Jermaine as David Bowie, uh, as a crab. <laughs> oh, Jermaine's always David Bowie. Let's, let's, let's be honest. <laughs> Jermaine's always David Bowie. <laughs> Sometimes you have to do something outrageous. <laughs> yeah. And then we're gonna go to the frying for the frying pan. We're gonna try and make this fast because we're running out of time really fast. So we've got boom to the walk. Boom. Whoops. Boom. See, so we're running into that problem again where we've got stuff not staying so we've got a, a keyframe here that stays and then we've got the keyframe on the opposite side of that that's working good then we can add a duplicate again and then get rid of the camera moves because we don't need them we're going to make a different one and uh, that's going to go to the to the fryer The deep fryer. And um, I have a dial on the front that's going to be set to bonkers hot. <laughs> All right, and then there's going to be a basket in there. I feel like when the basket comes up, you need like a whole fish that's just sort of crispy. Yeah, absolutely. Then um, we need some boiling water or boiling oil, rather. Mm. And some sort of like waviness to the basket being in there. But lots of boiling bubbles and such. I feel like this seems to be really fun for an effects animator. Also, oh yeah. Also, we need our our lines for this the zip pan because we're gonna go zip 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 zip. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing how like a small touch is really all you need to do to sell something yep and then we're gonna take this keyframe copy it paste it and then do a small adjust right here for when the basket comes up Right, so we got to see that basket. So smack, and then boil, and then basket comes up. We're gonna do just a small little one right here to show the start of the basket coming up. You don't need to show the hand or whatever that that's doing it, but um, I mean we could. We don't have time, so we're not. <laughs> so hope you don't mind.
So, and things are getting rough as the show progresses. <laughs> We've run out of animation budget. <laughs> <We're>, yeah. <laughs> I just saw, I recently saw that one uh, sequence from the Gumball? Amazing World of Gumball where <laughs> they run out of budget. <laughs> that is one of the best. <laughs> if if you want to see like the nuts and bolts of how cartoons are made, like watch that and you'll see like just some genius stuff but it's all production process like that's that's like legit real uh very smart it was very yeah. very smart <laughs> so it comes up with a basket and there's like a bit of breaded fried fish happen in there and then if you know it would it would get dumped onto a plate or something with some chips so we're going to do one more camera move. Uh, we're going to delete. Whoops. Just wanted to delete the keyframe, not the panel. Whoosh. We have that. And then um, we are going to copy that keyframe, paste it so it stays for a minute, and then create a new keyframe. And we are going to widen here. And we're also going to put a keyframe in the middle of this so we can arc it. Boom. So we can see that happening. We're going to take some of that. Oop. When you move the keyframe, it deletes the, the middle one. So you have to you know set, set it up first. But we're going to put a plate right here. And uh, we're going to cut the scene we're going to take this basket on the f layer and we are going to flop it like that now we're going to have to put a hand in there because that doesn't happen on its own but again running out of time so we're going to salt shaker that hand <laughs> Call back. <laughs> and just add like a little couple knuckles or whatever. So that's going to get dumped onto the plate. And then we are going to duplicate that. Get rid of the keyframe because we don't. Oh, keeps doing that. Then this bit is going to get taken, put onto the plate. We're going to flop it around so it looks good. And we're going to put a stack of fries. And uh, what, what else gets served with fish and chips? It's like tartar sauce and like a little ramekin. There you go. Let's put some tartar sauce right there. Maybe some peas. Sure. Some peas. Some heat. So we know that's fries. We know that's that. Okay. Spat, boil, <laughs> plop. And we're going to take all of this stuff here and put it on the previous panel. So, Mike, we have, we have under five minutes left. Do we want to do just a run through of everything we have? Yes. Let's do one more panel, though. Um, and I think we should just do a, a quick callback. Um, to this scene here, and control or shift M, and we're just going to take this, copy it, and we're going to paste it here at the end. Zoom in really quick to bump it up to the other. There we go. Um, there we go. We're getting our, our fishes and our octopus. We're going to turn off our guides, make our brush smaller.
maybe not the most satisfying resolution that we intended. Well, I think if I remember correctly, like the, the initial prompt was just to um, help the octopus come to terms with the situation. And I guess this could do that. <laughs> Let's have a, a little uh, like, oh, no, oh, my. Uh, <laughs> And where he's uh, holding on a little tighter. <laughs> that looks good. Um, and uh, ah, I keep uh, putting my cursor on the wrong thing before I push delete. And that's when a hand comes in and grabs him. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, where'd it go? <laughs> Push. <laughs> Tell my story. And then one more beat. Oh, this needs recognition. It's really fast. You always want to make sure that your characters are telling one thing at a time. That needs to be there. What? Hey, hey, where'd you go? <laughs> Ooh. Okay, there we go. That's what we've got. All right, so we've got fish. Oh, groan. And the octopus comes up. Oh, my gosh, what a beautiful day. Don't you just love being on land? <laughs> what is great about being on land? Oh, you know, it's the sun, and you get to feel the wind, and it's so wonderful. You know where you are, right? No, where am I? You are in a chamber of death. And we zoom out to the unfinished drawing of the kitchen. Um, and uh, so all of these things are going to kill us. Like these. Whoosh, fire. Sizzle, 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 sizzle. And then thunk. And we go to the deep fat fire and uh, thunk. We see sizzling, wonderful uh, fried fish. See? Now, what is there to be so excited about? I think maybe one more pose change here we could do to, to sell that idea. Of him feeling justified in ruining this guy's Outlook on life. Now tell me, what is there to be excited about here? And we'll copy that. Duplicate that. One more time. Huh? Oh! Okay, and that's what we've got. So tell me, what's so good about being on land? He gets tucked away. Oh, and then that's it. That's what we've got. That's what we have time for. All right. Budgeting your time, folks. <laughs> Nicely that's done. important. Mike, thank you so much for joining us once again for Collaboratory. Do you have any projects or topics that you'd like to draw our attention to? Well, um, not at the moment, but soon. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'd like to thank everyone. 
exciting. Uh, thank you to everyone who joined us for Collaboratory. If you'd like to try your hand at storyboarding, you can download a 21-day trial of Storyboard Pro from our website at toonboom.com. And if you're excited to learn more about storyboarding, be sure to join us for tomorrow's live stream. Director Chase Conley and his former student, Errol Petgrave, will be discussing how to storyboard action sequences, improve in the craft, and respond to feedback. So be sure to tune in next time. We'll see you guys sending your fan art. <laughs> <laughs>